ice cream shop colors, vintage floral fabrics, and mix and match furnishings. Hi, I'm Mary Emmerling, and today on Country at Home, we'll see how this charming country kitchen in Atlanta was created by combining all these elements. Outside of Atlanta, ice cream shop colors have been combined with a treasured collection of floral items to create a kitchen that is abloom with charm. In fact, I visited with Cheryl Alexander and discovered her cottage-style kitchen has more florals in it than you might find in a greenhouse. Cheryl, how did you get interested in country cottage style, or would you call it Victorian style? I would call it cottage. Um, I think cottage is very comfortable and inviting. So I kind of went from there. And what did you collect first? Because you have a lot of great collections. Probably primitive furniture, the very earliest. My mother-in-law started me out, and I have started then with vintage fabrics, in 20s, 30s, and 40s, and kind of got my color scheme from that. Well, I noticed the colors you have taken from the fabrics, and the furniture is painted in all different colors. Were the original paint, or did you paint some of them? Sort of half and half. Some of the chairs are 20s and 30s, and some are turn of the century oak. And I painted those, kind of scary, <laughs> but I did. And then I found the um, round oak table in the old butter paint, butter yellow. While each of the dining chairs is painted a different color, they're also dressed with their own vintage fabrics and pillows. Plus, an antique shoe bag decorates the back of one chair. Notice how this cozy seating area blends even more fabrics. This antique wicker chair came with the floral cushions, but Cheryl embellished it with more fabric and a touch of lace. Common among all the fabrics are the old-fashioned colors. The furnishings also stay true to this cheerful color palette of green, rose, and yellow. These painted pieces provide a necessary backdrop for Cheryl's abundant collection of rose patterned china. Different collections have been grouped together for impact, like the display of antique English chinsware in this green hutch. And what would a kitchen with ice cream parlor colors be without ice cream parlor bar stools? Cheryl found these antique ones and knew they were a must for her kitchen. Of course, each was freshened up with a different coat of paint. It's not just color that gives this kitchen interest. It seems no matter where you look, there is plenty of eye candy. Antique jars hold sweet treats. Flea market finds decorate the tops of cabinets. Even the window above the sink has been framed with cute finds. You know what I love that you've done here? The windowsill. People always forget about decorating it. Now, what collection is that? They're old salts and peppers, and I tried to concentrate on the cut glass, mm -hmm. and I just decided to make vases out of them and put the uh, lids from China around the window, and they're very affordable. To tie all these collections, colors, and patterns together, Cheryl chose white cabinets and countertops. She also says it's important to keep true to a color palette, like the pastel Cheryl used, and also consider your wall covering. What advice would you give for people collecting, especially when you love so many colors? I would say I'd stay in the same uh, color family. Mm -hmm. And if you're going with florals, it's always good to have a striped background or a simple background, and they can vary in sizes also, flower patterns. And would you collect just one flower for no, one? not necessarily. I think if it stays in the same color family, I think works. you're okay. And thank you for having me here. Oh, I enjoyed having you. It's a southern style home on the outside. Inside, this home has been filled with a large collection of Victorian pieces to create both an inviting and exciting look for the living room. These collections have been grouped and gathered all around the room to create interest wherever the eye rests. Homeowner Cheryl Alexander has chosen rich reds and vintage fabrics for her collections. It's a mixture of elegant things and weathered things, and they can kind of play off each other and look good together. I think because of age, I've changed it quite a bit, and 
So it's always something new to look at. And I can live with my collections too. One of Cheryl's favorite collections is this group of vintage Valentine candy boxes from the Victorian era, which dates between 1890 to 1910. Some are made of tin, but most are made of paper, and they're predominantly displayed all year long. An interesting backdrop for the Valentines has been created using curtains to frame a picture for a faux window effect. Colorful lamps highlight the vignette, which is completed by a collection of vintage lithographs. Most of them are um, either Gibson Girl or some of them are called Yard Longs because they are yard long and they're a Victorian era. Valentine's Day isn't the only holiday represented in this room and a space many might overlook. Above the doorway, Cheryl has installed a high shelf on which Santa Claus can be seen among an assortment of antique toys and tin. The vivid colors of these items work well with the array of colors in the rest of the room. Around the fireplace are floral fabrics, prints, and a colorful painted wooden piece. The green piece is the top of an old organ, and I found it in an antique shop, and this fireplace mantle was so plain when we moved in that, of course, I had to have something to take away the plainness. The floral print under it is an old yard long. It's, um, of course, roses. And then the vintage fire screen is um, the old fabric. The footstool is Victorian. And then the little candelabra is from France. I like the way she's weathered. This mantle has also been accessorized with floral china and vintage glass. Cheryl prefers the warm finish of these vases because they have more character than new items. On the other side of the room, more textures and patterns have been mixed and matched. Above the sofa, curtains are once again hung on the wall, while floral print screen fills a corner of the room. Eliminating the sharp, white corners from a room helps create a feeling of softness and increases the sense of coziness. The sofa is covered with delicate lace and floral textiles and pillows, which give it a fresh and inviting look. An upholstered trunk serves as a coffee table and holds a simple collection. I started out with uh, collecting the buttons. They're called gay 90s, and they're from cloaks that women wore, and they would have one button on the top. And I love those, so I decided I need to find something to put them in. And I like the contrast of the old tin truck. Cheryl has created other vignettes as well. For instance, a small collection of children's shoes from the Victorian era sits atop a weathered, painted footstool. On a flowered ottoman, a pair of lady shoes from the 1930s creates visual interest. When creating your own vignettes, Cheryl says it's best to put items at different heights and to mix small and large items to create pleasing contrast. Also, keep walls light in color so your displays stand out. And notice how Cheryl has used deep red to help tie the room together. It may take a while to gather enough collections to fill a room with vignettes as Cheryl has done. After all, she's been collecting for 30 years. But work slowly, find pieces you love the most. Then you can create your own vignettes and fill your home with floral fabrics and a mix of elegant and weathered furnishings, all designed to showcase your own Victorian country collections. Creating a country holiday in your home means more than just decorating a tree. It's also important to create a holiday table that adds a magical glow for entertaining. To create a comfortable and relaxed look, combined with a romantic and festive atmosphere, one homeowner was inspired by the Victorian era. Highly decorative with a floral and feminine flair. These words describe the Victorian style, a look that's the inspiration for Cheryl Alexander's dining room outside of Atlanta. This design style began with England's Queen Victoria back in 1837 and lasted until 1901. Cheryl says it lends itself perfectly for holiday entertaining and table settings. I think it's a very romantic look and I think it's also um, conversational when you have people over to eat and dine. There's lots to talk about. Lots of people talk, like to talk about the historical turn of the century items that I've collected. I kind of like to 
mix and match my china and my chairs and my silverware. I think it's a little more casual look. I think it makes people that dine here a little more comfortable in this day of computers and everything's so hectic. I don't like it to be so stiff. I, li I like the casual part of the mixture. Florals are another aspect of Victorian style. And to add even more to her dining room, Cheryl has spruced up a tabletop tree with fresh roses. The evergreen and the roses combine to give a delightful aroma to the room. The tree and the poinsettias in the room are placed in antique cachet pots that once held ferns in a Victorian parlor. The sideboard and the antique dresser also showcase Cheryl's eye-catching collection of antique bottle brush trees. To frame the doorway to this beautiful room and these lovely Victorian collections, garland has been created from twigs and moss, then accented with dried roses, pepperberries, eucalyptus, and evergreen. All of which dries naturally and will last long after the holiday entertaining.